Our second fraction topic is going to be equal fractions. Sometimes you'll see this word, which is equivalent. If you see the word equivalent, equivalent just means equal. So don't get confused if it says equal fractions, equivalent fractions. We're talking about the same thing. Um, equal fractions is a pretty easy concept. Um, all you simply have to do to make a fraction that is equal, or to make a, a fraction that takes up the same amount of space, uh, is multiply or divide the top number and the bottom number by the same thing. Multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the exact same thing. It's pretty simple. Um, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how this works, and I'm going to show some diagrams kind of to prove this just so you have a better idea of what we're talking about. All right, let's look at a couple of examples here. Uh, I'm going to start off pretty simple here. I'm going to start off with two-fifths. Uh, and for two-fifths, I've just drawn my brownie pan here, and I've cut it into five equal pieces, five equal size brownies, and I've filled in two of them because I get two of them. Now, what I talked about originally was we needed to either multiply or divide the top number and the bottom number by the same thing. Um, so here what I've done is I've multiplied the numerator and the denominator both by 2 to end up with 4 tenths. As long as I multiply the top and the bottom number by the same thing, I'm going to have an equal fraction. So we would say the 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. Now, the picture to prove it. Here's my 2 fifths. Here's another brownie pan that's the exact same size. I started off by cutting this brownie pan into five pieces and filling in two of them. But since we're timesing it by two, I need to have twice as many brownies. So all I did was I just drew a line straight down the middle, giving me a, a, a new row on the top and a new row on the bottom. So basically times two, we doubled the amount of brownies we have in the pan. But if you look at it, uh, now we have four tenths instead of two fifths but they both take up the same amount of space. If they take up the same amount of space, we've got an equal fraction. And again, an easy way to do this, you just multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. Now, moving over to this example here, I've still got two fifths. I've got my brownie pan that's got five equal pieces, and two of them are filled in. And this time, I'm going to multiply it by three instead. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of cutting this right down the middle so I have a top and a bottom here, uh, I'm times it by three, so that means I should have three rows going across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this as equal as possible here. And now I just changed my fifths into fifteenths. I basically tripled the amount of brownies I had. So now if I go in to fill six of these in here, okay, one, two, three, four, Five, six. As you can tell, two-fifths takes up the exact same amount of space as six-fifteenths. So two-fifths is an equal fraction of six-fifteenths. Simple way to do that, multiply the top and the bottom by the exact same number. All right, here's our next two examples. We've got three-fourths and twelve-sixteenths. I'm telling you ahead of time that these are equal. But again, to make an equal fraction, we just have to multiply the top and the bottom by the exact same thing. So 3 fourths, to change to 12 sixteenths, is just times 4 and times 4. Um, so on the top, if I go to fill in my 3 fourths, okay, that's pretty easy to do. Now, down here, I want to change this into sixteenths. And since we multiplied it by 4, that means I'm going to want 4 rows going side to side here. So I'll do one down the middle here, that would give me two, and then I'll do one here, and I'll do one here. Now we've got it cut into sixteenths, and if I fill in twelve sixteenths, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now if you take a look at this, we can tell that three-fourths takes up the exact same amount of space as 12 sixteenths. So we would say those are equal fractions. All I had to do was multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, and we got some equal fractions. Now if I look at the other side here, 3 fourths and 15 twentieths. Okay. 
Um, basically what I'm doing here is uh, I'm going to see if these were equal and all I have to do is multiply the top and the bottom both by 5. 13 times 5 is, or 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20. Okay. So all I need to do right now is I'll fill in my 3 fourths And then since I multiplied it by 5, I'm going to need 5 rows going straight across that are of equal size. Now this is going to be a little tougher. I'm going to have to kind of estimate and kind of actually probably hope that I'm okay here. 1, 2, 3. That doesn't look too bad. So now my 4, by multiplying it by 5, changed into 20 pieces. So now if I fill in 15, I should have 5 per column here. And you can easily see that 3 fourths is the exact same as 15 twentieths. All right, why don't you try this one on your own? And here's what I want to see. Um, we're changing 1 eighth into 2 sixteenths, and we're changing 1 eighth into 3 twenty-fourths. They're equal fractions. Both of these are. So I want to know in these circles that I've drawn here, what do I need to multiply 1 eighth by to get to 2 sixteenths? And then give me my set of pictures to prove it. This one needs to be 1 eighth. This one needs to be 2 sixteenths with the same amount of space drawn in. Remember how we did that? Whatever I multiply it by, that's how many rows I need going across. Same thing here. Uh, give me what I need to multiply by to get 3 24ths, and then give me my two pictures. 1 eighth up here. Uh, 3 24ths will be easy to make as long as you give me as many rows as you multiplied by here. Pause this video uh, and see how you did. All right, let's start off with this one right here. Uh, my answer should have been multiply by 2 uh, because 1 times 2 is 2, 8 times 2 is 16. Uh, now I have them both drawn at 1 eighth right now. I need to change this into 16 so I need to make two equal rows going across. So I'm just going to cut this right down the middle. If I do that, you can see that I have now 16 pieces and two of them are filled in. 1 eighth is the same size as 2 sixteenths. When I come over to this side, the answer was times 3. 1 times 3 is 3, 8 times 3 is 24. Uh, so I'm going to want three pieces going across here. And let's see if I can do that. Now I've got 24 brownies in my pan, but it still takes up the same amount of space that 1 eighth did. All right, the next thing I want you to do is, I've got four, six written a bunch of times up here. I want you to come up with at least six equal fractions to four, six. Now, you don't have to draw the pictures. You just have to understand the basic principle that all I have to do is multiply or divide the top and the bottom by the exact same thing. Take some time to come up with six of these. Uh, make sure you show what you multiplied or divided by and then come back and watch the video and see how you did. Remember, my answers are going to be probably different than yours for some of them, um, but as long as you multiply the top and the bottom or divide in the top and the bottom by the same thing, you'll be fine. All right, here's what I came up with, and understand yours might be a little bit different than mine because there are, I mean, an infinite number of possibilities here. But what I've done is I started up here, I multiplied both of them by 2, 4 6 is equal to 8 twelfths. I divided both of them by 2. 4 6 is equal to 2 thirds. I multiplied top and bottom by 3. Uh, 4 6 is equal to 12 sixteenths. Better change that to 18 That's better. Uh, I multiplied both of them by 10, uh, 40 sixtieths. I multiply numerator and denominator by 5, that's going to be 20 thirtieths, and then I multiply both of them by 1,000, and that would be 4,000, 6,000. Now, I mean, all of these, as long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, a picture would work for them just fine. Like this one right here, uh, I would have to have a much smaller, finer tipped marker for this. But if I started with 4, 6, and then I made 1,000 rows, going across, it would take up the same amount of space.
here's the last portion of these notes I'm going to ask you to do here. Uh, I've got six sets of equal fractions, but for each one of your equal fractions, one of the numbers is missing, either the numerator or the denominator in one of the pairs. I want you thinking about the principles of equal fractions, either multiplying or dividing the top and the bottom by the same thing, to figure out what the x values are for each set of equal fractions. Also list on there what you multiplied or divided by to get that x for each of these problems. You don't need to draw the pictures, that's fine. Uh, just keep in mind what an equivalent or equal fraction is. Try this out. Watch the rest of the video to see how you did. All right, let's take this first one here. Uh, 2 times what is 18 is basically what we're asking for. We know to get that part, that was times by 9. So an equal fraction says you have to times the bottom by the same thing, times by 9. 5 times 9 is going to be 45. So 45 would be your answer to the bottom here. For here, to get from 8 to 16, that's going to be multiplied by 2. So to keep it an equal fraction, I have to multiply the top by the same thing. 4 times 2 is going to be 8. For this one, now you could do this probably a couple different ways here. To get from 15 to 5, I know it is divided by 3. So I have to do what number divided by 3 equals 3? Well, of course, my answer is going to be 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now, if you wanted to do this a different way, we could. Let's say I still have my x here. If I want to go the other way, 5 times what is 15? That would be 5 times 3. So then I could do 3 times 3, which is still going to get us 9 for our answer. I go here, uh, let's see, 1 times 6 is 6, so blank times 6 is 24. Should be 4 times 6 is 24. And again, we could also go backwards with this if you'd like. 6 divided by 6 is 1, so I have to divide the bottom by the same thing. 24 divided by 6 going backwards would be four. Here, uh, I could go this way. I could go one times what is three. One times three is three. So then three times three would have to be nine. If I tried it a different way, uh, three to get to one would be divided by three. And then my question would be what divided by three is going to be three. And of course, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 9 would be your answer for this one. And then the last one. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 30 divided by 3 is going to be 10. And then the same thing if you worked backwards. 8 times 3 is 24. 10 times 3 is 30.